Welcome to lesson one of climate change. So in this lesson, we're going to look at what climate change is. We're going to define it and we're going to have a look at how the Earth's climate has changed over three different time scales. Well, first of all, um, climate change really is a long term change in the climate. It's a long term change. It, it's not really something that you would see in the course of uh, a day, a week, a month, a year, or even two years, or even three years. It needs to be much longer term than that. And we can easily see climate change. We can best see it using a graph, using a line graph. And line graphs are things in geography which we use to show change over time. And we can really see this in the line graph or possibly on a bar graph too. So um, these changes can be upwards, they can be increasing, or they can be downwards, they can be decreasing. Uh, they can be natural, or they can be man-made. They can be anthropogenic, anthro, man, genic, created, man-made. So basically, if there is any long-term change in the climate, we call that climate change. The shortest time scale you can see it is possibly over a decade or two decades, but really I'd say probably three decades because climate, as we defined before, climate is the average weather taken over 30 years. So really for climate to be changed, you have to see it over probably more than three decades because otherwise you're not really seeing climate change because you can't see climate. You've got to have a 30 year thing for that. So we're talking at least 30 years for there to be a sense of climate change. That's why it's long term, but it can be longer than that. It can be centuries. It can be thousands of years. It can even be millions of years. Climate, as I just said, is the average weather. So a one off extreme weather event such as the droughts of Australia of 2019, 2020, uh, that's a weather event. It's not climate change. Uh, so in your assignment, the first job to do will be to look at this website, uh, which is the BBC webpage website on climate change. Have a look through the entire page and then uh, click on some of the videos as well. And you can see those. So there's two videos to click on and you'll see those pictures in the assignments. Here are the two videos to look at. This one on the left is the first one. And this one is almost the last one. Just look at those two videos for today. That's going to really, really help you. And also have a quick look through the text as well. This is a, an artist impression of what the Earth looked like from space about 22,000 years ago. This was during the peak of the last glacial period. Now, glacial periods are ice ages. And uh, this is when there was maximum ice. So this is the coldest part of the, the recent cycle. And you can see over the North Pole, there's a lot more ice. In fact, the UK is here and half of Great Britain was covered in ice. But the southern half where we live was not covered by ice. And in the Ice Age, about 30 percent of the land was covered by ice. So if you look at all terrestrial ice, that's land based ice, 30 percent of the land, almost one third was covered by ice. Whereas now it's 10 percent. So we can see that in ice ages, you get three times more ice on the land than currently. <laughs> so this is the, uh, the current um, extent of permanent ice on the land. And the map shows us that, as we know, there's two main places for the ice. You've got Antarctica down here and then you've got Greenland ice sheet up here as well plus a few bits and pieces in the mountains, like in the Himalayas and also in the Andes Mountains. But but almost all the ice, something like about 70% um, of all the ice is locked up or 80% is locked up in Antarctica. Uh, Greenlanders are also important. If you look back into the ice age, you can see there was a three times more ice. There's a huge ice sheet sitting over North America. This is called the Laurentide or the Laurentian ice sheet. Uh, there was a huge one over the the uh, uh, northern Europe, which is the Scandinavian ice sheet. Um, and then if you look at the Andes, the ice sheet over there was a lot, a lot bigger. 
that's the ice on the land the terrestrial uh, ice but also there's lots more sea ice because the area between uh, North America and Europe was covered in sea ice so there was sea ice uh, down to about 40 degrees north so from 90 degrees the North Pole down to 40 degrees latitude and then down here from about 40 degrees south down to 90 degrees south there was lots of sea ice so really it was like a frozen planet not completely because you had lots of oceans as, as well so when I say ice age well there was more ice on the land than there is now but obviously there is um, there was still lots of ocean there uh, those eagle-eyed people around will see that during the ice age the continents look different because the sea levels went down by about 100 meters and uh, these islands became connected because the sea is currently very shallow there and as the the sea levels went down what you find is that the shallow water becomes land and so people could walk from this part of asia all the way down to borneo sumatra and down to these parts even the philippines you could walk from the uk to europe south america was definitely a bit chunkier as was florida currently we have a narrow finger of land it was a thumb of land rather than a finger and again this shows uh, the current um, ice land-based ice is white sea ice is sort of bluish bluish what light bluish this is what we have now this is what we had during the last ice age we had a lot more ice now this shows us a map of the, the British Isles we can see what's happening here this is where the ice sheet was in the last ice age about 18,000 years ago and you can see that uh, ice covered most parts of Wales northern England all of Scotland and the most part of the island of Ireland but there was no ice in London there was no ice around Birmingham there was no ice down in southwest England Devon or Cornwall um, this red line here shows us where the absolute maximum of any ice has ever come to and uh, so parts of Suffolk and Norfolk were covered by ice um, but this part of southwest England and southeast England has never been covered by ice so that goes for our area London Kent has never ever been covered by ice but go a bit further north up to around Cambridge and that would have formed the edge of the maximum ice sheet right this is uh, task B because task A was to find climate change task B is uh, looking at this climate trend here and this climate trend shows us the last 2.6 million years ago uh, in fact it shows us the last 5.5 million years ago because if you look at the graph you can see 5.5 million years uh, but it goes all the way from 5.5 million years all the way down to zero which is today now, this line is the temperature line and up here is the graph the, the data numbers showing the temperature so this is uh, the average for the entire period uh, this is two degrees above two degrees below eight degrees below so we can see that that for the initially 5.5 million years ago the climate was was a lot warmer than today so let's say the zero line is the temperature today okay that's important so for millions of years it was actually a lot warmer than we have today it was between one and two degrees warmer than the temperatures today so this is quite a warm part this actually was called the tertiary period and uh, it was from five and a half million years ago down to 2.6 million years ago it's quite a warm period however although we said it's warm there are some fluctuations fluctuations is when the graph goes up and down and you can see it's not a steady line it's fluctuating up and down but there's a distinct cooling trend here and this cooling happened from this point here this is 2.6 million years ago and this cooling trend has got colder and colder and colder down here and this period of time from 2.6 million years ago to now it's called the quaternary period quaternary here's the spelling and this is the ice age it's the current ice age earth is currently geologically speaking in an ice age but you might be thinking but how can it be an ice age there's 
there's there's uh, there's not much ice now. There's only 10% of the land is covered by ice. Well, yes, but we have ice, and that's the idea. You know, we still have an icy planet. Antarctica's frozen. Greenland's frozen. We still have ice on the land, and we have ice on Earth. And that means we're pretty much in an ice age period. But let me qualify this because can you see these huge swings in temperature going from zero to minus four? And that's the temperature difference between um, a warm period and a cold period is about four degrees. But if you look down here, these temperature swings, these fluctuations have become more and more intense. So this one over here, minus one down to minus nine. Now minus 10, so this is nine degree swing, a nine degree Celsius swing from warm period to the cold. So as we go through the quaternary, the overall trend is getting colder, but the swings, the fluctuations have become more extreme. Um, and if you look carefully, you can see this current line going up here. This is where we are today. Okay. So this is basically the task B. And um, when you do task B, this is basically what you're looking for. You're looking for what's the overall trend, use some evidence, talk about uh, some degrees, talk about uh, when, a million years ago, try to find some anomalies. You want to refer to the temperature range, fluctuations, was it above or below average? And here's quite a nice little answer. You can pause it there, but don't just copy it. Think about it. Is that correct? Because uh, just need checking. Right, task C is looking at climate change, long term climate change over the last 450,000 years, which effectively is half a million years. This data comes from ice cores in Antarctica and Greenland. Um, and do you remember on the last graph you saw those fluctuations going up and down? Well, if you spread the time scale over a, a, a longer period you find that they aren't so much like really swings up and down they are uh, gradual increases and decreases effectively in the last graph for, for task b the time scale was so compressed that it looks like it was literally switching a light on warm cold warm cold reality is that it's uh, a steady change um, and not always steady sometimes it goes up and down on the change so it's actually really really complex but we can see clear periods we have warm periods called interglacials we have cold periods called glacials so it goes glacial cold interglacial warm glacial cold interglacial warm glacial interglacial glacial interglacial and there's this alternating pattern this oscillating pattern between cold glacial periods and warmer interglacial periods and that's definitely what we've seen during the quaternary period when we have had 33 ice ages throughout the whole 2.6 million years and the ice ages have been coming, have been getting colder, and the warm periods have been uh, pretty much staying about the same. But the glacials have been getting more and more uh, intense, more deeper and deeper, and colder and colder ice ages um, over definitely the last um, half million years. And you can see it actually on this graph that the glacial period is slowly getting colder and colder. We saw that in the first graph. Um, again, here's a nice little answer which you could use for task C. Again, don't copy it, just check it's right because it might need some checking done. Okay, 